teach me, Lord, to praise you, Lord. Teach me, Lord, to praise you. Praise you, Lord, is a Catholic Christian praise and worship radio ministry. Hi, my name is Jeffrey Zagaria. Please join us as we give praise, honor, and glory to our loving, awesome, and merciful God. Well, He is loving and He is merciful. Welcome to Praise You, Lord, episode number one hundred forty-six. I believe Jackson. Am I right on that? Gosh, it's been it's been almost a month, I think, since we've been on the air, and we are so grateful to be back on this show. We've tried to do this show several weeks in a row and ran into all kinds of resistance. Even tonight, we had a lot of technical resistance. I started getting things together two and a half hours before the program. That's really early and just ran into a few uh, walls. So we have a backup of a backup of a backup running (laughs) our program right now, and we got it going. So my parents would be very happy to hear that my electrical engineering degree is actually being used tonight. So <laughs> thanks right. mom and dad for helping me to get through that. But um, we we have Bobby um, Bloom with us tonight, a good friend, actually. And uh, Bobby, how are you? I'm very well, thanks. Thanks for having me on. Thank you for being here. Jackson Messick, again, as I mentioned, is here on the program. Jackson, how's it going? Hey, doing great, Jeff. Thanks for having me always. Wonderful. Wonderful to have you. And um, so good to be back together, Jackson. It's, it, it is. It's, it's been a while. Um, wow. Bobby actually has a phenomenal testimony. We're going to be getting into that in this program. And it's, it's just a beautiful, very touching testimony. Now, what's interesting is that um, Ed Dacker at the former owner of one of the radio stations up in the Treasure Coast, one of the 19, excuse me, one of the 20 stations that that currently play our program, Praise You, Lord. Um, He had, he and I have been friends for quite some time, many years, and he had said, have you heard this testimony of this woman, Bobby Bloom? And I'm like, oh, Bobby? I'm like, I know Bobby. He's like, no, no, have you heard her testimony? I'm like, um, I know her. I, I mean, I pray with her. I, I, I see, I mean, we, we were in the same prayer groups and prayer circles and it's like, yeah, but have you heard her testimony? You've got to get her on the air. Now this is going back, gosh, I don't know, maybe a year or two at the time flies for quite some time. And when I see him or, or speak to him, he's like, did you get in touch with Bobby? I'm like, no, I, I just, just didn't quite happen. Well, finally, here we are with Bobby. And when I really heard your testimony, Bobby, I was like, wow, now I understand why Ed was so touched. You have a phenomenally interesting uh, and touching, I found very touching and inspiring and faith, faith-filled faith testimony. And you're here with us today, Jackson and I, on Praise You, Lord, to discuss how you, how the Lord touched your life and and. And uh, we're just really excited to to welcome you, Bobby. Thank you very much, and praise the Lord. He's always good. Amen, that's right. He's always, yep, and he's always trying to bring us back to him. That's and exactly that's right. Did in my, yep. Amen. So I'm very grateful for that. Absolutely. Bobby, we're going to get into your testimony in one moment. I'd just like to welcome the Praise You, Lord listeners back And for those who are new, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are the Praise You, Lord community. We're an underground, independent, Catholic, Christian radio broadcast brought to you by the grace of God approximately once a week. Uh, We've been not able to have a program. I literally had a near-death experience. I'll I'll probably speak about that another time because Mm -hmm. I don't know if I died, and this is not a joke, I don't know if I died or if I almost died or I almost didn't die. I'm not sure. (laughs) I saw the light. I did, you know, I happened to, I happened to, um, amazingly by God's grace, uh, um, go unconscious in the middle of the woods, um, in front of, if you can imagine in the middle of nowhere, really in front of a medical doctor from a prestigious, um, uh, hospital 
in a major city near, you know, not too far from the mountain that I was, uh, a few hours from the mountain that I was hiking or, or, or near within the valley, actually, where we met. And I passed out in a nurse and he tried to revive me. And of course he did by the grace of God. But I, I went out, I saw a light. I, it was, it was the best. I, I told him when, it was the best five minutes I had all year. Um, <laughs> it was so peaceful. It was one, I just saw, a, I mean, it just, everything got brighter and all of a sudden I was in complete peace. I don't know. I was in a, I don't know what, where I was or what was happening, but he couldn't find a pulse or was having trouble finding a pulse. Um, wow. That's a, that's a story I think I'll tell next time in detail. It's a miraculous story. I, I spoke to a friend. I'm, I'm, a, I'm an engineer also. And, um, and I spoke to one of my friends who I went to engine electrical engineering, I uh, studied electrical engineering with, and he's not um, a religious man by any stretch, not even sure about God. I told him what happened, and he said, he recapped what I said, and he basically said to me, he said, you know, that is statistically absolutely impossible. That, that, that's a miracle, how that all unfolded. That had to have been God. This is from a man who's not a religious person. So we'll go over that story um, by the grace of God next time. I want to get more into Bobby's miraculous. Bobby has a miraculous story, and she's on tonight. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk maybe, God willing, more about that. But I wanted to let you folks know, thank you for your prayers. We always ask for your prayers. We don't collect money in this program. It's completely a voluntary ministry, and it's brought to you um, uh, without any financial strings attached, which is a real blessing, I think. Um, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm really grateful to be a part of it. And uh, we'd like to thank the Catholic Radio Network, who plays us. That's the 18 mega stations in the middle of the country. That's uh, that's out in places like Denver, Colorado. And, and I understand that they have spread across the state of Colorado, Missouri, and Kansas as well. And then, of course, 98.3 FM, the Catholic voice of the Palm Beaches, which is our original station, a small station in the Palm Beaches of South Florida, and also the Treasure Coast, which is um, 100.1 FM, Prince of Peace Catholic Radio. Thank you, thank you, thank you, folks. Keep praying for us. And uh, we are, again, with Bobby Bloom. She's going to tell us her testimony today, and we're, we're, we're currently working with three pillars for our program, and the, the, the first pillar is testimony. The second is thanksgiving for what great things God has done. And then third is praising God for who he is and what he's done in our life. So Bobby, let's get, let's get at it. Let's, let's talk about your miraculous story. And it truly is miraculous. Now, where should, where would you like to start, Bobby? What would make you comfortable? Um, probably from the beginning. And I've been thinking about uh, my testimony and when I started really believing in God okay. and connecting with him. Great. Let's, and let's it do happened that. At, okay. So it happened at a very young age. I must have been five years old or so. And um, I had a strong presence of God. And I remember li- um, this was the first house that we lived in. And I was talking to somebody. I don't know if it was one of my parents or somebody and I was trying to figure out like how I got here basically. So I was telling them, well, I'm from God and I'm from the universe and I'm from planet earth and I'm from the United States. I'm from New York. I'm from Long Long Island. I'm from Oceanside. I'm from 222 Skillman Avenue. And here I am. I was like, but but the first. Now, Bobby, wait a minute. I I have to back you up a second because I thought we were starting from the beginning. It doesn't sound like a four or five year old thinking this. Or six. How I know, old? But I was. You were thinking that. Okay. I, I was. You were. You were thinking that at four or five. Or three. maybe six. It was when it was definitely when we lived in the first house. Okay. So, so you were you were questioning who you were and where you were from and and so on at a very young age. Yes, I was very young, definitely, and it was definitely because I remember where I was standing, so mm. it was right outside of kitchen so it was definitely while we lived in that house and on long, so i was younger in long island on long on long right. island okay yeah okay great okay and then so, and so I, what happened I, 
So, the, well, what's interesting is that I asked my sister, like, last week, like, did mom and dad talk about God? Because I don't recall them really discussing God when we were younger. Okay, wait a minute now. And you're you're, you're fast-forwarding to last week, which, and by the way, this is 2000, we're in 2020, and this program, just to time stamp it, is uh, September. Yep. As a matter of fact, this is 9-11 right now when we're doing this pre-recording. So 9-12 of 2020 and 913 is when this broadcast will be going on the radio. And then of course people will be able to hear it on the podcast as well, uh, which they can hear at any major podcast platform. So Bobby, you were speaking to your sister. I just want to make sure for, for clarity, you were speaking yeah. to your sister a week ago in 2020 about this subject. Is that what you're saying? Not about, not specifically about my, my thought pattern, but whether or not my parents spoke about God, because I had such a strong presence that I thought it must have been from my parents discussing wait a minute, it. Wait a minute, you had a strong, what do you mean? You felt a presence from God as a kid? Is that what you're saying? I was aware that he existed. Like, I didn't okay. hear voices or anything like that. I mm. was just aware that God existed and that he was, I was near him. I don't know how else to explain it, but. That's beautiful. But That's beautiful. I've, I had that too, he, Bobby. I felt that way as well. You did? Oh, absolutely. I used to cool. write love letters to the Lord when I was a little kid and put them under oh, my that's bed. that's so cute. Yeah. They disappeared. I don't, I don't know. I, I, I've always thought as a kid that God took them, and maybe he did. I, I don't know. But they were gone. Uh, and my parents never mentioned sweet. them, which I think is interesting. But at any rate, go ahead, please. That's That's beautiful. Yeah, so it's just, you know, as an adult, looking back in hindsight, I was just wondering to myself, knowing that I would be interviewed, like, where did I get all of that from? And maybe my parents did discuss it, and I just didn't remember it. But my sister was very quick to say, no, they, when we were young, they didn't really talk about God, even though they are believers. Okay, so you, do, you don't so, remember them speaking about God, and you, you and your sister doesn't as well, is what, is what you came to a conclusion. Correct. Okay. Because that got it yeah okay and yet oh, and, and yet worried. and yet you had a a personal relationship with the lord so to speak as a child is what you're saying i think so to speak i i don't remember talking to him per se i just remember knowing that he was there okay got it yep so then another i remember another experience where um i was old enough to dress myself um, but I remember learning how to dress like at, a, an, at an earlier age, I think. And I would dress really quickly, like at the speed of lightning, because I knew I was certain that God was watching me and I didn't want him to see me naked. I remember that. That's interesting. So, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Now, now, uh, I, now, Bobby, were, did, that, were, your, were your parents uh, congregants at a, at a house of worship? Yes, they were, but I don't remember being a member of a synagogue when I was that young. Okay, so mm -hmm. you you were brought up Jewish, is what your 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 parents were Jewish, oh, yes. or you were Jewish? Yes. Tell us, my tell us about that. All right. Well, yeah, we all grew up Jewish. I okay. mean, my sister and I grew up Jewish. Um, and, and your uh, parents I, were I Jewish. Your your parents that brought you up were Jewish as well, or are they Jewish? Brought us up Jewish. They brought us up Jewish, but growing up, we didn't know until we had got grown up a little bit that my dad actually grew up as a Christian. Oh, hmm. that's interesting. So he, yeah, he used to teach Christian Bible. I mean, he, so, um, and the name Bloom is very, it's a Jewish name, but actually my dad was Swedish. He, my whole paternal side is from Sweden. He hmm. wasn't from Sweden directly, but my grandparents were, and their name was Blomquist, and then they just shortened it to Bloom. And so did, that, so, did he marry a Jewish uh, woman? Yes, he married my mom, okay. and my mom must have thought, well, he's Jewish because his last name is Bloom, but he really wasn't. And then he converted <laughs> um, He converted after they, or be, probably before they got married. I think it was before, yeah. He converted to Judaism is what you're saying. Correct. Got it. And then raise a family Jewish. Correct. And yet didn't speak about God much in the house is what I think you're establishing at all. 
Not when we were younger. When we were older, yes, we had conversations about it. And I wanted to correct myself because I do remember my mom, whenever I was naughty, she would remind me that there's a God above. That's when she brought up God. Okay. <laughs> but as we got older, we it was different. Um, Jackson, take some about- notes on that. That might work. <laughs> Jackson's got a household of kids with, with Old Testament names. That might work, Jackson. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry, Bobby. Go, go. Please continue. That's all right. So, yes, and I find that to be interesting as well, that they were both believers, definite believers, and yet they didn't really discuss God. And, I, and recently, again, like I was just trying to figure out why, and it may have been that they underestimated the value, like they probably thought that we wouldn't be able to relate because God, you can't see God. He's invisible. That might have been the reason none of them are here to explain to me why. Um, But as I got older, my dad and I would, my dad loved nature and he would constantly make comments like, look how creative God is. Look what he, look how marvelous God is. I mean, we, we had conversations and my mom too. So that's a very, um, that's a very Jewish uh, perception too. Wouldn't you? I mean, that's not just Jewish, but it's certainly within the Jewish religion. They've, um, nature. I, I think that's true of a lot of religions perhaps, but certainly Christian as well. I'm biblical, biblical. It's a very biblical insight. Would, wouldn't you say? I guess I didn't think of it as such then. Um, you know, we're just in the background, in the backyard, you know, watering the flowers or watching a National Geographic show, and he just always appreciated the creativity and the brilliance of God. Amen. Yeah, sure. Um, the crea- like, we can appreciate uh, Da Vinci's work by seeing his creations. Exactly. We've, not, we've never met Da Vinci, obviously. None of us have. But we can speak about him, and it we is- can marvel at, at his, his ability as a creator of great artwork. Um, and the Lord is the same, except he's, you know, the creator of, right. of the universe. Right. Yeah. And it's awesome. It's just awesome. I love nature. Yeah. It's so awesome. Okay. Yes, please continue. Sorry. No, that's fine. And so, um, so, oh, the other thing is I was obsessed around those years with being Jewish. Again, even though my parents really didn't, bring, I, they brought must have brought up that we're Jewish, I, or I would not have known that I was Jewish, but I was a little obsessed with it, I would say. And I remember one morning, um, very it was very early in the morning, and I climbed into bed with my sister, who was sound asleep. With my, I climbed into bed with my pencil and my pad, and I woke her up, and I was insistent that she teach me how to draw a Jewish star. And um, she was like, go away, it's too early, but... Um, I wouldn't go away. Uh, so how, she, you're speaking she about said, being a very young person, I think, right? You're, you would be a child, yeah. a young child. Yes, yeah, so I was a child still while we were living in that first home, so definitely young. Mm-hmm. And um, and so she said, just draw a triangle and then draw another triangle upside down. And I remember drawing them side by side. I was like, but it's not working. <laughs> <laughs> I felt so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so... I remember that as well. Um, but I don't remember. We definitely fasted during the High Holy Days. Later on in life, I do remember being um, a congregant of, of Temple Israel, actually, in Brookline, Massachusetts. Um, so I, I don't know. I don't know what happened when I was young and why my parents didn't, didn't discuss it the way most parents would. I don't know. So, but thankfully God was there and he understood and he, he helped bring me along where, you know, they lacked in that regard, I guess, but he was there. Amen. And, and so, and so, um, what else tell us, uh, what's the next point? So then, um, by the way, I lived in a neighborhood where there were many, many children who were we were all pretty much born in the same year. Mm. And um, most of them, I would say, like pretty much 99% of them were Jewish. It was a Jew- predominantly Jewish neighborhood. Sure. And yet, I chose Christina, who was Catholic, to be my best friend. Mm. And Christina lived two doors down from David, who also I played with. 
he was, actually he was a, a, a little bit of a wild kid, but when we played together, he was calm. And Christine and I were riding our tricycles outside, and David came racing out of his house, and he threw me off my tricycle. And I was stunned. I was really hurt, and it, it actually broke the skin under my lips. So I ran into Christina's, Christina's mom, and she hugged me and coddled me and dressed my wound. And I remember I was crying, but the, the main memory of this story is that I began to realize or to wonder at least if there was a connection between Christina's mom and that lady statue that was um, sitting on a shelf, I believe, around the corner near her kitchen. Okay, so you so, saw a statue of a woman in this Catholic... Yeah, they had a, the, yeah, it was the Blessed Mother. It was a statue of the Blessed Mother. Because they were Catholic. They were a Catholic family in the Jewish neighborhood, and... and and you were wondering if there was a connection between this very kind mother helping you in that moment of um, trauma, really, as a child, right? Right. Having not only yeah, being I was, hurt, and I mean, it's terrible to be hurt on a bicycle as a child or even as an adult, but to be pushed by your friend is very traumatic for a child. It definitely was. I remember that. I was really hurt, and mm. it didn't occur to me until much later in life that he was probably jealous. I was, I was playing with Christina, and I wasn't paying attention to him. Interesting. That was probably all of the mouth. But that's neither here nor there now. Um, but yes, Christina was Catholic. Her mom was a very loving mom, and somehow this had to have been by the grace of God because there's no way that I could make a connection between Christina's mom and that statue, the, you know, the Blessed Mother. There, there's no way. Right. As a young Jewish be. child, you saw a statue of a mother but didn't know what it really was at that point probably, right? No, because she what, it was a, Jesus was not in her arms. It was a, just a statue of a woman. I so see. I didn't even know that she was a... I, didn't, I had no idea that she was even a mother let alone the mother of Jesus. I had no idea. Oh, it was just a woman, know. a statue of a woman. Yes. Got I it. don't remember which title she was under, but it was just a statue of a woman. Jesus was not, you know, she was not holding her child in her arms or anything like that. So I didn't really see that, that statue woman lady as um, anything but a lady. Sure. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, and what, what happened next? What, how does that connect? Well, that's just going through my childhood experiences, and I, I, I see that single experience as... Bobby, um, Bobby, excuse me, but do you, excuse me for one moment. Do you have your hands on your cell phone or something? I'm hearing some... No. Inter- I'm holding it. Could you put it my down? My AC... Yeah, there's some there's some clicks that's happening. I, I think it might be something touching near the uh, perhaps the microphone. I don't know if you could set it down somewhere and just speak to it. That might be. This. Is this does this work better? Yeah, so far it's gone away. Thank you. I, I, this is a very important okay. story. Your story is amazing. I, I want people to be able to hear it really clearly as as cl- clearly as possible. Okay, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Please continue. Okay, no problem. Um, so yeah, so that experience to me, like that stands out almost the most of all of my childhood, um, experiences relating to God, um, or my connection with God, because that is the experience where I, I believe now in hindsight that it was the blessed mother who was calling me or our Lord who was calling me Mm. through his mother, but I had no idea. Mm. And I didn't even realize, I didn't realize until I was much older in life, like in my 20s or 30s. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, great. And then after, after that, I, uh, we moved around the corner. So it was like the same neighborhood, but a little bit, you know, further away from where we had lived before. And again, predominantly Jewish, tons of kids on the street. But I became very friendly with, again, one of the only Catholic kids. And, um, I loved playing at her house. I preferred playing at her house, even though my house was much larger than hers. And, um, and it was for three reasons. She had a piano, she had a beautiful doll 
and she had that same statue lady that Christina had in her house. Hmm. Same exact one. Wow. So, um, and we would dance. We used to dance in her her living room, um, and I would situate myself in front of, I think she was sitting, the, the Blessed Mother, the statue was sitting like on a mantle or something, but in any case, I remember looking up and I would dance right in front of her so I could secretly admire her. Hmm. Okay. And, 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 uh, and so, so what, so, okay. So you're giving us a lot of childhood stories, interesting stories. Where does this lead to just for the listener? Where, where are we going? Um, you had, you're Jew, you were a Jewish child. You were innocent. You didn't know anything about the Blessed Mother. You happened to be very good friends with some uh, Catholic, uh, Catholic fan, you know, of, uh, in a predominantly Jewish neighborhood. You became good friends with, with a Catholic child in both neighborhoods, and, uh, and they both had that statue, and you were attracted to that statue. And, and mm-hmm. so uh, what, ha- what happened? You know, how, uh, wh- what happened, what happened uh, beyond that? So after that, um, I just kind of lived life. Um, I was still very much into being Jewish and learning about the Jewish faith a little bit more. Um, and then what, then we moved, we moved to Massachusetts and, um, uh, it wasn't until like, my mom started getting involved with reincarnation. She started believing she got in, she, she got connected with some people who are, who are involved with that. And, um, they convinced her that God would never create a place called hell because it's such an evil place. And um, so we started as a family, not so much my sister, really not so much my dad, um, but we were connected with somebody, um, a community that lived out in Albuquerque, and they believed in reincarnation. So we would visit them. And at the same time, um, I, I actually, I need to back up if that's okay, because there's sure. something that came very important, very, very important that came before that. Um, I believe I was a freshman in college and I came home, I was going to school in Boston and I, and we lived like 10 miles away from Boston. So I visited often and my mom said to me, I taped a movie for you. It's a very important story that you should know about in life. And she had never done that before. And I asked her what it's about. And she told me that, well, the name of the movie was Our Lady of Fatima. Hmm. Um, I think actually it has a a name similar to that, but, and she said, it's about the Virgin Mary who appeared to three young uneducated children in Fatima, Portugal. And I reacted. I was really upset and surprised that she would believe in a fairy tale. And so I approached my dad and he said, no, 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 actually it was true. It was witnessed by 70,000 people. So, um, so I decided to watch the movie. My hands were crossed. I still, I watched in, in disbelief and there was a certain scene in the movie where the blessed mother, you don't see her throughout the movie. You only hear her. And there was a scene where she, um, appeared near the children. And for whatever reason, I fell in love with her right then and there. And hmm. I started crying from my soul, like from the depths of my soul. And I cried because somehow I knew that she was a very, very, very beautiful woman on every level. Hmm. And I was also sad because I thought, why, if she appeared in 1917, why can't she appear in modern time? And then I also cried because, of, well, I don't know if I was crying because of this, but I was sad because... I understood that she was Jewish and I, she was Catholic and I was Jewish. So therefore she didn't even know who I am. Hmm. So, so that was, that really affected me yet. I was unable to discuss it with anybody because all my friends were Jewish and my family was Jewish and nobody would be able to relate. Hmm. So I just kind of pondered that in my heart. Did this, did this, uh, did your mother and father present this, video to you before they got involved with the people who um, were involved in some type of 
religion that believes in reincarnation or was that during that time before that time just to kind of like where it seems like they were searching for answers maybe Clear, clearly outside no, the jewish faith uh, right clearly and no it was definitely before okay they got my mom got with them definitely before i see okay <laughs> Okay, so yeah. then we're going to fast forward to the 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 reincarnation um, religion in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I think it was, or or beyond. Where where are we yeah. going from here? Albuquerque. They they had retreats. One was in Albuquerque, and one was right here down in South Florida. And my oh. family and I attended both retreats, and they were held in Catholic churches. By the way, that's interesting. And at hmm. the time, I yeah, and at the time, I didn't think it was weird at all. Yeah, well, so, you you wouldn't uh, you wouldn't yeah, sure. Right, nothing registered. I just kind of went along with the program, and so. Um, well, you weren't I, you weren't Catholic, started, you were you were Jewish at that time, right? You were you were you going to synagogue yeah. at that time, Bobby? Um, I don't think so. No. Okay. Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. Got no. it. Okay, so you you were when did you stop going to synagogue? Uh, probably in high school. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then, we, then you went to college, probably. you kind of just like started yeah. s- searching or, or did you forget about it and just yeah. kind of went to school and did, I don't know. I don't think I forgot about it because one of my best friends from college told me or reminded me that we used to have a lot of conversations about God. Hmm. Right. Right. I don't, I remember. But I don't remember having that. I mean, I don't. I don't remember it. But he does. He remembers. You know, that's a funny. So, uh, that's an interesting point, Bobby. If I, if you, if I may, um, when I left the Catholic Church, because we have, you know, as people who listen to the show on a regular basis, they've heard my testimony. But I'm sure there are new people that don't know. So, um, I had left the Catholic Church pretty much in mind and spirit by about mid my mid teens, but just out of respect and, and, and honor to my family who I was staying with until I went to college, I would, um, continue to go to church, although I really didn't want to go. Um, and I left the Catholic church and Mm -hmm. went to college and in Boston as well, and really got quite lost. However, I do recall really searching and having lots of conversations. I mean, lots and lots of conversations with folks about God and about paranormal, about, hey, there must be something bigger and more than, you know, getting a big car and getting a big house. You know, what about the afterlife? What about ghosts? What about, you know, what about all these things that are, we don't know, you know, this clearly, I mean, it was clear to me that there was something more than the physical realm that there were, you know, people have dreams. I mean, there's people kind of see things coming before they come. I mean, there's, that was very obvious to me. I didn't know I wasn't involved in a religion. I began to look into new age, which was really common in Boston. I mean, Boston is at that time was just full of new age bookstores. I used to go to them, go to the, um, yeah, you know, there's a lot of new age teaching and culture in Boston. When I was there, I haven't been there in 20 years. I I go back to visit. Um, I would assume it's, I don't know if it's, there's more, it wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me, but, um, uh-huh. Anyway, so yeah, so I can remember the same thing, and and when I, when I when the Lord really saved my butt, and I cried out to Him, I cried out to the Father. I wasn't ever imagining going back to Catholic, the Catholic faith. It was the last place I ever imagined going or ever wanted to go. Um, uh-huh. And so I cried out to God. I knew enough to do that in my desperate place, and I heard, I, I did hear a voice, and He He guided me back to the blessed mother as well. So we have that in common, but, but going back to that point, you know, it's like that longing. I, I believe that longing in a, in a, in a man or a woman, a person's heart, you know, uh, there's that, there's that space in our heart that can only be filled by God. That's and, right. And, and, and until we, until we invite him in and, and search for the, the truth that, as we say from the scripture, the truth that makes us free, um, it's uh, there's nothing you know. We'll we'll always be empty. Our hearts will be empty, and I was experiencing that in, in so much. But uh, but yeah, I was really searching, and I was really having a lot of conversations with with folks in college, like like what I think I hear you you saying. 
Yes, absolutely. I mean, again, I don't really, I mean, he seems to recall us speaking about it like a lot more than I remember, Mm -hmm. but I believe it, believe it. But anyway, okay. So so I'm in college and, um, and we get introduced to this, this new age group and they actually wound up inviting me to move out to New Mexico, to Albuquerque and spread their message. Wow. And their message was that the Messiah um, is actually kept reincarnating. It sounds crazy now, but um, he he kept coming back in major religions. Um, oh, I, I've a seen a lot of for hum- yeah, I've seen a lot of books like that, Bobby, in Boston. Well, oh, uh, that, well, that's where I was. But yeah, 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 I've seen that that teaching a lot. Sure, not necessarily from that group. Maybe it was. Um, was but, it was it like a group? Um, but, was it was it was it based in kind of Indian kind of some stuff from India, so like mixed in with well, Hinduism it, or something? Yes, yes. There was Hinduism, Baha'i, um, Christianity, of course, Judaism, um, Islam. Like a one world so, religion. Uh, like a one world religion sounds like. In a sense, yeah, that's probably where that's going. Yeah, probably. Okay. And so while I was involved with them, I, I was actually um, studying the Bhagavad Gita and I was reading bits and parts of the Old Testament, New Testament. I was just reading a lot. Um, and I, I found myself mostly attracted to Christianity. And so they, they invited me to move out there to help spread their message. And I said no twice. And by the third request i thought maybe this was uh, an invitation from god so i agreed to go and at the time i was working um speaking of new age bookstores i was working in brookline massachusetts um and on my my lunch breaks i would i would frequent the new age bookstore that was up the street and um believe it or not in this new age bookstore i stumbled across a book on medjugorje and Medjugorje is very similar to Fatima in that the Blessed Virgin Mary appeared to um, shepherd children. But instead of three children, it's now six children um, near the border of Croatia. And so I picked the book up and um, I, I, I couldn't imagine buying the book because I needed gas money to drive out to Albuquerque. But it was that voice and it wasn't a real audible voice, but it was that voice that reminded me how I reacted to Our Lady of Fatima. So I wound up buying the, the book. I purchased it and I read it that same evening from cover to cover. And I was so excited because if you recall, when I one of the reasons why I was crying during um, watching the movie Our Lady of Fatima was because why I was, I was wondering and wanting for her to appear in model t- modern times. So right, now right. Mm. that she is. So, um, and, and for listeners, Bobby, excuse me one second. Um, for listeners that are listening in who are not familiar with the visions at Fatima or the current visions happening at Medjugorje that Bobby is, is speaking about, you can listen to our podcasts on those subjects. We have several on Fatima. Father Richard Champney O'Carm, who we all know here that that are, you know, Bobby knows him well and, and Jackson and I and he comes in as a guest on our program he gave a very good talk on Medjugorje he's been there several times and he gives a testimony about being there um, I've been to Fatima on the hundredth anniversary of the events and I give a testimony about that with Jackson so you can go back and listen to those programs um, on the podcast if you are interested so I wanted to make an aside on that and also Again, thank you for listening to Praise You, Lord, the underground independent Catholic Christian radio broadcast brought to you by the grace of God approximately once a week. And we thank you for your prayers. So please keep praying for us. We need them and we thank you for them. We're on the phone with Bobby Bloom, who has uh, originally comes from Long Island, spends a lot of time in my neck of the woods where I grew up. Boston, Massachusetts, and currently resides in South Florida, where Jackson, myself, and Bobby know each other well. And again, 
I was met, it was a person up in the Treasure Coast at Dacoret who once was the owner and certainly the founder of WJPP, Prince of Peace Catholic Radio. Good friend of mine um, had mentioned to me, have you heard this Bobby Bloom's testimony? I said, Bobby, I, I know Bobby. No, but I didn't really know your testimony, Bobby. I knew you, but I didn't know this test. When I heard this testimony, I was like, wow, this is this is intense. All right, let's get back to your testimony, Bobby. We have approximately 15 minutes, okay? Just to give you a, okay. a, a you know, an idea. Okay, so so Okay. Okay, you're you're so, going out uh, to you find the book on Medjugorje in the New Age bookstore of all places. You don't have you barely have enough gas money to get out to the New Age religion of New Mexico that you thought you were go ahead please all right all right so so the book itself has a list of pilgrimage centers in the back of the book which is unlike any other book that I've seen on the topic of Medjugorje um, but the most important thing is yes I was concerned about the gas money but also um, what happened was I had gotten laid off from my job and I, I, I applied for this job I um, the position was office assistant, and within two weeks, I got promoted to acting office manager, which allowed for me to go on a pilgrimage to Medjugorje had I chosen, which of course I did. Whoa, um, whoa, 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 whoa! So, so you, 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 so you felt the call so strong that you didn't go to New Mexico to the that New Age group. You went to Medjugorje instead. No, I. One, I postponed my trip to Albuquerque. Okay. Um, and uh, a lapsed Catholic friend of mine, uh, I, I mean, I didn't want to spend $999. I called a, a pilgrimage center, and I just wanted met, um, information on the Blessed Mother's messages. And they sent me a flyer. They were having an upcoming pilgrimage for in honor of the Feast of the Immaculate Conception from December 3rd through the 13th. And um, my friend convinced me to go. And I said, well, I'll write some questions, and if I feel comfortable with their answers, I will go. I'll sign up, which happened. I called, and they said, well, I, I felt comfortable with their responses, however they were booked. But they called me the following day, and the seat opened up between um, – it wound up being between a priest and a then future seminarian. Um, so anyway, so I, I wound up going to Medjugorje. Um, I loved it. I – I felt so much peace there. There are miracles galore that happened there that science would never be able to explain. Um, and it was like the, that lady from my childhood became real, you know, I mean, it was just a really beautiful experience. Um, so when I came back from my trip to Medjugorje, from Medjugorje, I called the new age group and I said, look, I, I, I explained that I had gone on pilgrimage and I needed time to digest everything that I had experienced. And the leader got on the phone and he accused me of listening to a ghost. And that's when I decided altogether, I'm not, I'm not going out there. Yeah. Um, well, God protected yeah. you. That's great. That's how I see it. And I do too. And I was protective of the blessed mother. Nobody was going to insult her. Mm. I don't know. The whole thing just seemed awful. I decided, no, there's no way I'm going. And mm. then I had experience, a supernatural experience. Bo Bobby, where, Bobby, before you got to the supernatural experience, when, how long ago did that happen, that, that you went to Medjugorje? Uh, that was December 3rd, 1990. That was 1990. Oh, wow, that was a long time ago. Because today's, uh, we're, yeah. we're, we're doing this on September 11th. 2020 for those who are listening in. So this is, uh, that's 30 years ago. Right. Wow. Okay. All right. So yeah. Okay. I'm glad I asked that question. All right. And then you had a supernatural experience after that you're saying? I had a supernatural experience. And also for the listeners, just to under, even though I fell in love with the Blessed Mother did not mean in any way that I was thinking about converting to Catholicism. Mm -hmm. I just loved the Blessed Mother at that point. Sure. And so I had this experience where I was in bed and I was trying to take a nap, but I actually fell into this very peaceful state and I heard a voice. This is one of the only times in my whole life where I've heard a supernatural voice. It was a male voice and it was one word and he said, convert. No, sorry, repent. 
repent was mm. the word. Mm. And I got nervous and I called my roommate from Medjugorje and, um, and I told her what happened. And I said, I really need to speak with a very holy priest. So she connected me with one is that he's another whole story. He was amazing, but, um, he spoke, he asked me a lot of questions. I actually did most of the speaking and without any forethought, I asked him when I could get baptized. And, um, he said not for a very long time. And so I faithfully went through the um, Christian Rite of Initiation, um, RCIA program, and I got baptized in 1992. It's awesome. Wow. Quite a story. Quite a story. And here I am. Yeah, yep. here, and here. And I, I asked, what, I'm sorry. No, go ahead, please. I asked the priest, um, why I would have to wait so long. And he said, because I don't want your family to think that this is another fast. Cause I told him about the new age stuff. I told him everything, anything you wanted to know. And, um, you know, in hindsight, probably he himself was making sure that this was just not another fad regarding, you know, he wasn't sure probably where I was coming from. Well, you've been a Catholic now for 28 years. If I, if I'm doing the math correctly, since you were baptized, yeah and went through the RCIA right. program, right? So did you did you get um, confirmed and baptized as well? All uh, at once. All yeah, at once. All at once. Father Sal, yeah. Where, where did that happen? Where, where were you, in Florida or New York or Boston? Where were you? No, I was in Boston. Um, I got baptized at St. Aidan's Catholic Church. Where it's it? the same church that wrote It's um, Brookline. That's in Brookline. Okay. Um, uh, I was baptized in the same baptismal font as JFK. That's where the family used to worship. Interesting. But anyway, it's, yeah, so it's a beautiful church, and um, and I learned a lot. Father Sal taught a lot of young adult classes on encyclicals and all kinds of things. So, um, yeah, it's been quite a journey. Yes, it sure has. Now tell tell us about your... What happened once you once you con- converted? You repented, as 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 you heard that word, repent. What did that mean to you once you went to the holy priest? Well, how did what is your interpretation of that word? What what do you think that that all meant for the listeners um, to, to kind well, of put that was, together? When I when I was in Medjugorje, I noticed that um, penitents, people who are online to go to confession, they were literally on their knees. Mm-hmm. And I thought to myself, wow, like, it's really nice that, you know, if they think if they sin, it's nice that they go to confession, but I don't sin. So therefore I don't need to go. So I think that I know Jesus a few people who think that straight. still. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think Jesus <laughs> was setting it straight. Like you need to dig a little bit deeper because I can assure you, you sin. Well, you know, <laughs> Bobby, you're hitting, you're hitting a very important point here. Um, uh, it, it's that, you know, a lot of people think that they're good people. They don't hurt anyone and they don't realize they need saving. Mm. People don't realize right. that they sin. They don't understand that we're, we're all sinners. We, everyone's a sinner. We were born. That's correct. We were born s- sinful in nature and no one's perfect. Right. And we all need to, to repent. <clears throat> and that's what you were feeling. You felt like you didn't need to repent. But it was nice that these people felt that way and they were on their knees. I think that's what you're saying. That's exactly what I was saying. Mm -hmm. Um, But it does say in Scripture in Old Testament that even the just man sins seven times a day. So we can't escape it. You know, I mean, it it is. You're right. We were born with original sin. I mean, even Moses couldn't make it to the promised land. You know, I mean, imagine, imagine that. For anyone that really knows the story of Moses, I mean, it's that's incredible. Um, mm-hmm. Not just that, but he was chosen by God, and he started making excuses that he stuttered, so therefore he he shouldn't be the one, you know, yeah, to do the work. Yeah, absolutely. He did a few things that that I'm sure were, well, you know, God. That's between him and God. But but um, but Moses was an amazing prophet and an incredible man very few men like mm-hmm. Moses and uh and he's a, a great a great man and I I love reading the uh the the uh book of Exodus which I've read many times and I continue to 
I try to read the Bible, continue, you know, continue to read it because each time I read the scripture, I learn more and it enriches my life. It helps me in my own life, Bobby, when I read the Bible. Uh huh. Absolutely. So, so repent. Um, so going back to your testimony, you heard the word repent, and you saw people repenting in Medjugorje, but you at that time thought you didn't need to repent. You you thought you you didn't sin. Correct. And then what happened? I, I did, yeah. well, how, um, how did so you kind of the change? More, the more I the more I learned about my newfound Catholic faith. Um, you know, I was also receiving a lot of spiritual formation. So there were people helping me, you know, to examine my conscience. And um, I just I just got really into it. So I, at, at some point after that, I began to realize that, um, that I absolutely sin, you know. But God always loves us no matter what. He never stopped loving us. Um, but... He's never happy when we sin. So, um, and he did mention in, in Jesus mentioned in the Bible that um, you know he he instituted the um, sacrament of of confession. Yes. He wants us to confess and to a priest. Sure. So, and, and going back to your um, Jewish roots, Bobby, um, I'm just curious what what during the high holy days. Uh, when you fasted and, and repented, what what did you repent of? Do, did you think that you had any sins then, or that's a really good question? Because I probably thought the same thing then when I was fasting that I don't sin. Um, so it's an excellent question that honestly I can't a- answer because I'm assuming I thought then that I that I didn't sin. Sure. Um, Sometimes or maybe I maybe. Uh-huh. I was just going to say, sometimes we we have religion. I mean, it can happen in the Catholic faith too. Sometimes people kind of just do things religiously and go through motions, and it's you know, it's like, well, everyone else is doing it, so I'll do it. And uh, yeah, I, I used to be a Catholic like that in some regards. Yeah, I'm. I'm wondering if I, I, I don't know. I, I kind of remember, but this could just be in my imagination. Where in those when we were going to synagogue and for the high holy days, I vaguely remember my mom mentioning that we fast in order to repent of our sins. And maybe I just, I, I understood then because my mom was instructing me, but, but then you live life and you go in different directions. Sure. I think that might be the case, but I can't swear to it. I don't remember clearly enough. Sure. Sure. That's, that's uh, great. Just to, just to be able to, um, have this conversation and, and, and think about it. And I think that when the listener uh, listens along and begins to think of their own, because when we listen to stories, we, 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 we put ourselves in the story and we relate to it from our right. own experiences. And that helps us mm-hmm. to, to grow in faith and to grow in knowledge. Um, I want to bring Jackson in, Bobby. And, and one thing I was Fair. realizing as I was sitting here listening to Bobby and, and um, Jackson Bobby's on the phone, but Jackson is on Skype. I see him. And I'm thinking to myself, well, we have basically three people who repented and came back to the Lord. We were The three of us came from very different circumstances. I mm-hmm. was born and, and baptized Catholic since I was a baby, left the church, and then, as I said before, you know, recommitted. Um, Jackson was brought up with no religion, um, and he went through the RCIA program in his early 20s. Right, Jackson? Yep. And correct. Bobby, we just heard your story. You go How old were you when you when you um b- became a Catholic, Bobby? That would have been if you don't mind me saying. Were, you, were in, you in your 20s? No. Yeah, I was in my late 20s. Late 20s, got it. Okay. So Jackson, um you've been listening as you're a great listener and a great co-host and I know you intercede while we while we're here and just can't I can't express Full time. Uh, yeah, I can't express uh, so much thanks for your support and your help here, Jackson. Be here, thanks, buddy. Um, and you're very insightful. So, what um, we have, we have about three minutes left, guys. So, Jackson, what what do you what did you hear Bobby say? What touched your heart? Any insights? Yeah, um, 
I mean, I, I think it's awesome that, you know, when she was talking about her childhood and those experiences she had, I think it's, I think it's interesting because I, I mean, I can kind of relate. And I think a lot of people I know can kind of relate when, when, um, to having to touch when you're, when you're young from God, having an experience of God, um, even if it's in a childlike way, um, there, there can be these certain, uh, God centered experiences, um, that, uh, to you were so profound. Um, and, uh, even, even if it comes out as being just this experience that a child had, um, I think you, you know, you remember how powerful it was like you with the letters, right. Or Bobby with, with dancing in front of that statue. Um, right. for me, I remember, um, one experience I had, uh, I must have been, sixth grade it must have been the sixth grade because I, I remember actually i heard i was uh, at a skateboarding uh facility and um at the end of the skateboarding uh session that they had they actually had a bible study it was like a, a christian uh owner um had run the place and um yeah i'd never really been to church or anything so i remember hearing hearing somebody speak and um I don't remember what was said or anything. It, it didn't, that part didn't stick with me, but I do remember coming home that night um, and trying to pray. I, I remember being in my bedroom, kind of like you were saying, Bobby, it's funny how you almost have like a snapshot memory. I remember you mentioned in one of your stories, like you were like, well, I remember where I was standing. I was like right in the, right outside yeah. of the kitchen or what have you. I, I have one yeah. of those. I remember exactly like where my bedroom door was. I remember trying to pray. Um, I was a sixth grade kid. And, um, uh-huh. it was one of the only times I had tried to like really tried to pray on my own. Um, and just, just to, to your story, I think it's funny how in hindsight, you know, I mean, it, you know, they always say hindsight's twenty twenty, right. But definitely after you've had an experience with the Lord as an adult and you have a personal relationship, I think it's really beautiful how the Lord can remind you of these things, right. That, they, 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 that, uh, he brings them back in your heart and you're like, wow, that's really awesome that you were there right? You were there. It's yeah. one of those revelations of like, wow, it's so beautiful, Lord, that you were there um, it, it, every step of the way. Every yeah. step of the way. Yeah, well, and that, I, that blessed me. Jackson, Bobby. thank you for that. That that was really well put. And um, yeah, great point. And we all were touched as children, which is interesting. And and, mm-hmm. and so were the, the seers at Fatima and Medjugorje. They were children as well, right? And Jesus just to remind each well, other, uh, that we must become like children to enter the kingdom of heaven. This is something Jesus said. We're we're running uh, at to the end of the program. Bobby Bloom, wonderful testimony. Thank you so much for coming Thank into you. the program, Bobby. Thanks again for having me. Yes, thank you, Bobby, and um, that, what a wonderful program, Jackson. Again, thanks, brother, for being here. Thank you. And we'll so look to forward here. to uh, seeing you all with God's help next week. Please keep praying for us. We are Praise You, Lord, the underground independent Catholic Christian radio broadcast. You can check out our podcasts on any of the major podcast platforms and look into Fatima or Medjugorje or anything else. Repentance is another one that comes to mind. Well, at any rate, thank you, folks. God bless you and your families. And most of all, praise you, Lord. And yes, Bobby, God bless everyone. Take care.